Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another video. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this simple and tasty looking ice cream sundae in my watercolour sketchbook and give you a few easy tips on how to paint realistic looking glass. So I hope you enjoy the video and find it helpful. As always, all the materials will be listed in the description box below, along with a reference photo and a link to my Etsy shop, where I'm currently hosting a 20% off sale. So with all that said, let's get on with the tutorial. I began by drawing out an accurate outline sketch in my sketchbook, just using a regular HB pencil. I also mapped out the main shapes within the glass that I could see from the reference photo. Now painting glass might seem a bit tricky, so to simplify the process, I like to begin by first preserving the brightest white highlights on my drawing using masking fluid. I'm using a masking fluid pen here, but any masking fluid will do fine. If you don't have any masking fluid, you can also use a white wax based pencil instead, which will resist the paint and preserve the highlights that way. Of course, you can also add the highlights in over the top at the end of your painting using an opaque white paint or ink for example, but I like to block them in first as it means I'm then free to concentrate on other aspects of the painting without worrying about losing sight of them or painting over them entirely. But whether this is something that you want to do depends on your personal choice and to a degree the size and complexity of your subject. I've chosen quite a simple study today, but if you were tackling something larger or more intricate, this step would really simplify your process. Once the masking fluid is dry, I can now start painting. I'm using a size 4 round brush here and with the brightest highlights masked out, I now want to paint in the darkest colours and shapes I can see on my reference photo, starting with the cherry on the top of the ice cream. Painting the darkest colours early on like this will further simplify the painting process, as it will give me some boundaries to work between for the mid-tones later on. I'm just painting straight onto dry paper for this step as it's quite a small area and will ensure my colours stay nice and bright. When aiming for realism and especially when painting something shiny and reflective like glass, it's really important to get in a good range of values and have a lot of contrast in your painting to help make it look realistic and 3D. I used transparent red deep for the first layer on the cherry and mixed it in with some sap green to create the colour for the stem. For the shadow on the cream underneath the cherry, I mixed Payne's Grey, Indigo and a bit of transparent orange together and applied a very watery mix onto the dry paper where the shadows were darkest. Next I take a more concentrated version of this same paint mix and begin painting the darkest area of the glass dish and whilst these areas will need to go darker with subsequent layers, Doing this really helps me to separate out and make sense of all the different shapes going on. You can better see what I mean here on the base of this glass. Here I'm applying some really dark grey lines with just the very tip of my brush. It might look too dark at the moment considering we're painting a clear glass, but once we start to fill in the lighter mid-tones, the painting will start to take shape and these reflections may even need to go darker. Okay, next I'm going to paint in the mid-tones and I start by mixing up the colour for the ice cream. I'll paint in the dark chocolate sauce on the top at the same time as I layer it over the ice cream on the bottom. For this ice cream colour I had to really study my reference photo to decide what colours I would use or mix as it appeared to me as having green undertones to it. So I mix in a bit of olive green yellow with some yellow raw ochre and diluted it down with quite a bit of water to get the colour I was after. I then applied a light wash of this colour over the part of the ice cream on the inside of the glass dish, just painting wet on dry. Mm -hmm. 
I also added a bit of indigo to this paint mix where I could see variations and colour changes on the bottom of the glass itself. And that brings me on to my next tip when painting glass, which is to really observe your reference photo when you come to painting in those midtones. Since the colours you see in the glass will vary enormously and depend on how the light falls on it as well as the colours of what's in or around it. Spotting these colour variations will help to make your painting look more interesting but also look more realistic as well. So rather than just using the same one colour for all the midtones in the glass, I used a mixture of all the different colours I'd already mixed and that were on my palette, depending on what I could see from my reference photo. When the first layer was dry I then painted a second layer to add more depth and definition to the shapes in the ice cream. As well as darken up the bottom half of the dish as well. Once this second layer was dry, I then needed to mix up a really dark brown for the chocolate sauce. I used burnt umber and indigo, which was a bit more grey than I wanted, but it would do for the first layer. I also switched up to my size 2 Princeton snap brush here to get a firmer point for painting in the chocolate sauce. The top part here was fairly easy and straightforward and I just painted wet on dry to achieve neat crisp lines. This lower part though, where the source is behind the glass, was a bit more challenging. Since, because glass is transparent, when light in the air passes through it, it gets refracted or bent so distorts what we see. It's why flower stems look bent or distorted when we see them through a glass of water. Drawing or painting that distorted image though can seem a bit strange, but if you're working from a reference photo, you just need to make sure your initial sketch is accurate with enough information in it to make painting easier. Then it's just a case of taking a section at a time and having fun with it. It might also help before you start to go back to your reference image and re-familiarise yourself with the different shapes and patterns in the glass and look at whether the edges in this part of the photo are hard or soft. So hard edges have a crisp neat edge and soft edges are more blurry and fuzzy and that will also help you to paint in the different sections accurately. So if I want a hard edge I just paint onto dry paper but if I want a soft fuzzy edge, I can run a clean damp brush along the paint edge to blur it out. The main thing is though to have fun and enjoy practicing, and if you're trying out a new technique or subject matter, then start out simple and work your way up to more complex pieces, rather than challenging yourself to too much at the start and feeling frustrated or disappointed. The ice cream sundae is really starting to come together now, but I still need to go back and add another layer to make it look even more lifelike. So I add another slightly darker layer to the cherry. I 
and another richer and more concentrated dark brown mix to the chocolate sauce. Adding these darker layers meant I also needed to balance out the values on the stem of the glass too, and for this I added a mixture of greys and various indigo tones to bring it all together. Then it was finally time to remove the blue masking fluid layer and reveal the bright white highlights. For this I used a regular plastic eraser. The eraser also removed the pencil outline sketch I'd drawn in at the start, which I was pleased about as you don't really want them visible on your finished piece, but it did mean I had to go in and do a few finishing touches. I darkened up the shadows on the top of the ice cream. And I also decided to redefine the outline of the glass using a very light wash of paint that was left over on my palette. To make the highlights on the glass stand out even more, I painted another darker layer over the ice cream in the bottom half of the glass again, using the same olive green yellow and yellow raw ochre mix as I had at the start, but this time I added a touch of leftover grey indigo mix. Now I'm adding a bit more watery indigo to darken up the shadow under the rim of the glass, but I have to be careful not to cover up the highlights. You can always add any highlights back in though using a white gel pen like this, or like I said at the start an opaque white watercolour, gouache or ink, so just use whatever you have or find most effective. I'm quite pleased with how this painting turned out and I hope you enjoyed the video and found it interesting or helpful. If you did like it, please subscribe, comment below and ring the notification bell to be notified as soon as I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching, take care, have a great weekend and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!